Hello, welcome back. My name is Rujan and I'm a mechanical engineer by profession and a mechatronic enthusiast. I was getting started with mechatronics and automation projects. So I thought, let me just start sharing some of the basic stuff for the people out there who want to start with the auto mechatronics and automation projects. So in this video, we're going to learn about the setup of the Raspberry Pi, how to install the OS, what are the settings required uh, while installing the OS onto the memory card. The second thing is about the communication. So I'll be showing you four different ways of communicating with the Raspberry Pi. The first method is through the command prompt using SSH. The second method is also using SSH, but using the terminal emulator. And the third thing is using a, a GUI application on your laptop. So uh, just in case you don't have the keyboard, mouse and the uh, monitor separately to use with the Raspberry Pi, you can use your own laptop uh, to see the GUI. Uh, how the OS is operating inside this Raspberry Pi. And the fourth thing is using the HDMI to uh, connect to the monitor and you should be having also the peripherals that is the keyboard and mouse to use the OS on this. So let's get started and see how you can install the OS onto the Raspberry Pi. First thing you need to do is uh, go to this web page that is the Raspberry Pi products web page and then you can go to the software section. I'll be pasting this link in the description so that you can easily access the link. Then uh, based on your OS you're running on your laptop or desktop, you will have to install uh, the Raspberry Pi Imager. So here I'm gonna download the, the Windows uh, Raspberry Pi Imager. Once you have downloaded, you will have to uh, install the software. So once it's installed, I will say run the Pi Imager after the installation and click on finish. So now it will open Raspberry Pi Imager. So here now I click on the choose OS option. So now I go to all the other Raspberry Pi OS options. So here you can see there are two versions 32 bit and 64 bit based on your Raspberry Pi model you can select uh, whether you want to install 64 or 32. In that also there are two uh, two types of things one is with desktop environment and without desktop environment. If you are going if you're going with without desktop environment you will have to use the communication with uh, the command prompt only and with the GUI that is a desktop environment you can also access via command prompt and also you can connect it via HDMI port and uh, and and you can connect your peripherals so here I'm going to go with a web with the desktop versions so that I can demonstrate all the four different types of uh, communications with the Raspberry Pi. Here I'm going with the basic one that is a 32 bit. And now you can just select the, the storage option. It is always recommended to use the class 10 uh, memory card and with uh, uh, more than 16 GB of uh, memory. So that if you're doing some big applications, you can you have a lot of memory left. So now I go to the settings. And then here I say uh, what is the host name I want. I say it as a uh, tasty tech harbor in my case. So I enable SSH for this so that I can use command prompt uh, to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. So then now you can set your password for the Pi and I will keep the username as Pi only and I set the password. So now I, now I enter the, the Wi-Fi password and the username that is the SSID so that uh, once the Pi starts it will automatically connect to the Wi-Fi network which have uh, entered the credentials here so now I will select the country that is uh, currently I'm staying in Netherlands so I will select NL So this is the Raspberry Pi Model 3. After the uh, OS has been installed into the micro SD card, you just have to insert the micro SD card. 
so then you can use a micro USB uh, cable and then uh, you can power the Raspberry Pi with uh, 5 volts and a minimum of uh, 260 milliampere. that is a minimum current for it to run in the idle So once you have connected the power to the Raspberry Pi, it automatically starts booting up with the OS which is installed in the micro SD card. And as we have already mentioned, the, the Wi-Fi password and the SSID, it connects to the Wi-Fi as well. So the next thing what we need to do is we need to see what IP address the Raspberry Pi is connected to. So here, uh, so uh, we are using another uh, application uh, that is IP scanner. I will give the link to this uh, website in the description below. You can just download it and then uh, uh, there are two methods to run this. You can install the advanced IP scanner software or you can also run in uh, uh, without installing. So once the application is open, you can just click on scan and you can see to which IP address the Raspberry Pi is connected. Now I'm just copying the, the IP address of my Raspberry Pi and I open the command prompt as administrator. And then I use this command to connect to my Raspberry Pi. SSH is the protocol, Pi is the, the user. And then you put the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And then it asks you for the password to log in into the user. You can enter the password. Yeah, here you go. So now you can see that uh, Pi at Tasetech Harbor. So you have logged in into the Raspberry Pi. And also if you give ls as a command, it says that these are the list of the directories. So now coming into the second method which I told you we'll be using a software known as PuTTY. So here also we'll be using the SSH protocol itself. So PuTTY is a, a open source software and uh, which we use as a terminal emulator. So based on the operating system you have installed in your uh, laptop or desktop, you can install uh, the, the applicable uh, PuTTY software from this website. Here I'll be installing the 64 bit. As I've already installed the software in mine, so it's asking me to repair it or remove it. You can just say uh, in your case, it will just install the software. So here I'll just cancel the installation as I've already installed the software. Then I go to start, open PuTTY software, then enter the IP address, select the port and the connection type and then you can just click open. So basically it is asking you to whether you trust uh, this, uh, the host or not. So as we are using our personal laptop, I'll say accept so that it can um, store the cache also if required. So then uh, you see that the command prompt opens. So you can say login as Pi and then enter the password. So now we have logged in into the Raspberry Pi through SSH protocol. And this is a terminal emulator by PuTTY. So the third method as I mentioned that uh, you can use the Raspberry Pi GUI on your laptop without the aid of uh, the, the separate monitors and the peripherals. So to do this you would be requiring a, a software. 
so for that we'll be using a real vnc software i will be mentioning the, the link to this website in the description below you can download this software So before you enter the address of the Raspberry Pi in the VCN Connect, you need to enable the VCN option in the Raspberry Pi. So for that, you will have to connect through SSH protocol through the command prompt as I showed you before and uh, I'm doing it right now. You can just follow these steps so that you can enable the VNC. So now the VNC is enabled. Once the VNC is enabled, you can just uh, paste the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and into the VNC connect. And then you can just continue to connect to the VNC with a username and password. So once you have uh, logged in, so you have the GUI of the Raspberry Pi. It's the Raspberry Pi OS. So coming into the fourth uh, way of communicating with the Raspberry Pi is using the monitor and a keyboard and mouse. So for that, you would be requiring a HDMI cable so that you can connect it to the monitor. So here we have the Raspberry Pi. I'll just connect this with a HDMI cable to the monitor. So the next thing is I get the Bluetooth dongle for the keyboard and mouse. So then uh, you connect the, the power cable to power up the Raspberry Pi. So, so this is the first time I'm booting the memory card uh, via HDMI. So it takes time to boot. So it took somewhere around uh, two to three minutes uh, for it to boot for the first time. And then here you have the, the Raspberry Pi OS. The Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, it, it did not have any problem with the driver. It started working as plug and play. And uh, then here I have the setup, which I can show you on the left side. Yeah, so, uh, and then you have the desktop. Yeah, it's the Raspberry Pi desktop. Yeah so yeah so these are the four ways of uh, communicating with the raspberry pi based on your application or the project you're working on you can just go ahead with the, the with the communication process thank you for watching hope this video was helpful and all the links which i used in the video is mentioned in the description below and also don't forget to check out my blog that is uh, tastytechharbor.com and wherein i also paste some of the resources and the codes related to the projects and if you find this video helpful, please share with your friends. So let them learn about it. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.